Well, good day everybody. I'm hoping today's the day that we can finish this up without any kind of issues. It's been a hot week. Been a hot Friday too, but then a pissed rain late afternoon Friday, not all day Saturday. So far it's just coming down pretty hard. We still need to get this finished up and hopefully fingers crossed we're not going to have any issues. For peace of mind, I am just barring the engine over once. I just finished I just finished rotating the cam or the crankshaft around because I wanted to double check something and uh, my theory what I thought was wrong was apparently I did some reading and there's one tooth off on a sprocket so you need like X number of revolutions for the timing mark to come back around so I was mistaken at first by thinking somebody did the timing uh, set up wrong by not aligning the chains but that's not the case this is how it goes plus I want to rotate it over by hand to make sure um, if it's been over freely make sure nothing is binding before we put this valve cover back on so uh, kind of makes me a little happy still a little nervous you know Something could still go wrong here. Hoping everything is going to go all right. I used this tool, set it up, locked it in place, set my timing accordingly to the marks. It was I didn't have to move the camshafts any from where they were originally set up uh, using my marks that I marked on the cam. So we're going to find out. We're going to find out in a few hours here whether or not I effed up or not. The lineup game again. However the hell this is going to. Go, oh, where do you start? Where do we end? Probably something like that. I could try to put the valve cover back in. I only put the bolts on the front. Because uh, I didn't want everything else to catch. So now I got a wiggle. Just double checking with the boroscope because that back gasket rolled a little bit. And I was trying to put her in place. That took a little bit of work. We got her in there though. Um, one thing I want to point out if you don't remove the AC lines like I did and you go to put that passenger valve cover back in. It made it easier pulling all the bolts out of the valve cover. Now, however, when you go to put it back in, there's probably 99% chance that the valve cover gasket's gonna come out of place. And that's what happened to me. And once you get set up in a spot, there's actually a pretty good spot that you can lift it up and pull it back. And then you can reach around with your hand from either the top or the bottom um, to get the gasket back on. So right now the gasket's back on, so I'm going to hook up all my electrical on this side again. Run the cable down, start plugging everything in except for the crank sensor, and then continue working along. Alright, let's get this VCT solenoid back in place. And hope... ...that I never have to remove it again because... That seal's like 30 bucks. It's a one time use. And there's that ultra expensive gasket. Just gotta line it up. Still may ruin it. I'm gonna use the blunt side of the socket. It's actually working. It's actually working. Trying to Let's get it back down in there. The battery side. That's on there. That connects to the VCT. This one goes to the cam position sensor. And then this line right here. No, that's not the way it goes. It must be this way. And it must go underneath. Just a 
so perhaps I'll put the battery tray back in. We can't forget to hook up a little vacuum line. Oh, here you are. I've been balls deep in this project so long, I was kind of forgetting where I was putting stuff. Like the uh, computer bracket. That's kind of important. All right. Where does each computer harness plug into? I don't go there. How do you know which one goes where? They're kind of the same. Solve this problem. The computer harness will actually only go on one plug, so I was kind of concerned about that, but I may screw it up, plug those back in. We got the battery tray back in, computer is hooked up. Everything electrical is connected except for the crank sensor because I want to crank the engine over without it starting, get the oil pressure up. Uh, we still got to load the program for the VCT lockouts. Just got to do the new water pump, new fan clutch, put everything back together. Can't forget to put oil in it, our antifreeze, and then hopefully, hopefully I won't have to tear back into this thing. Well, I'm back after taking a short break and I get a lot of questions sometimes and people ask me why I really hate on Jeeps. And this is a perfect example I'm gonna show you. I took a screenshot of this. This was posted in the local uh, Jeep group that I belong in, and it says camping. How do you get camping out of that? All I see is a stock Jeep with LED lights that should be at the fucking mall. I don't understand how you're supposed to see camping from that. You know, it's fucking, it's those types of people, you know, that post stupid shit like that, that fucking, reason why I don't have like high respect for a lot of people that own Jeeps, because a lot of them fit into that fucking category. And that's one of the things I said before in other videos and on live stream is probably 70% of people who own Jeeps can't even turn a wrench. All right, a little rant over, let's get back to work. Just gonna pull all the bolts out. Gonna see if there's any ones that are different lengths so far they all look to be whoops that one didn't want to come out too nice a little bit of rust there sometimes when things don't go your way you need to give them some love I'm just gonna gently pry on that with the pry bar as you can see some coolant did come out I'm just gonna wipe out the inside here a little bit Alrighty, the end is so near friends, the end is so near, water pump is out, looking alright actually, got some cavitation issues going on in there, let's get this water pump in, pulleys, belt, fuck, I can almost taste it. Throw. Throw the pulley back on. Now you can use Loctite if you want. If you feel perhaps if these are going to come loose. I never have. That doesn't mean it can't come loose either. Now comes the fun part. Putting the belt back on. It's much easier to do it without everything else in the way. Never hurts to bring the instructions out. There's 
we all know how this job, getting this belt on, is not your friend. There we go. This one back there is kind of a kind of a pain in the butt. That's where this ultra-long quarter inch ratchet comes in handy. Before I put the battery in, I'm gonna start by five liters of oil first. Truck is armed. Getting close to start up. Battery charger on it before we load the program. Battery's gotta be in good condition. Get some coolant back in this thing. At this point, we're almost ready for startup, except I lost something. I lost something. My little green snap-on pen light disappeared again. Maybe with the million things going on inside my head right now, I just misplaced it somewhere, which I don't know where it is. And I found it. It was in my toolbox. Let's get that program loaded. This is the moment where I crank it over so we get oil pressure. Funny thing is, I'm not seeing any oil pressure. There we go. Got oil pressure. All right, let's plug it in, see what happens. All right, crank sensors plugged back in. It's do or die time. See what happens. Shit, is that quiet now? What a relief that is. Oh. So this is the aftermath. Crap all over. All over the floor. Those blocks sure came in handy. Truck is out of the garage. Got a big mess to clean up later. Gonna take it for a quick rip and clean up. Head out, go over to Aubrey's. Just reviewing some data here. Short term fuel trims and that are all good, so no vacuum leaks. First little virgin trip. Seems to be running really nice. Lockouts seem to be doing good. No strange engine noises, everything seems to be running smooth. All pressure's good, temperature's good from everything that I swapped out. Get back to the house. Be hot oil, see how it's idling. Almost at Aubrey's place. Truck has been running awesome. Got about 60 kilometers on her since I did the timing. No air messages, no weird smells, no weird noises. Fingers crossed. I think everything's gonna be good. It is late at night now. I just got back from driving to Aubrey's in Natton. Probably about 160, 170 kilometers there and back. The truck ran perfectly. I think it's motherfucking beer time now. I'm quite impressed with the cam phaser lockout so far. All right, motherfucking beer time. I got some Boxer hard root beer. I like this stuff. This stuff is good. Extremely sweet, and uh, it'll mess you up pretty quick. I'm not gonna lie, 
Today was a pretty stressful day. Um, you know, all this time and effort I put in filming all those videos, the one thing on my mind is that, you know, double questioning myself, triple questioning myself, did I leave a step out? Because I've never done it before. I've never done a timing in this vehicle before. There could be something that I didn't read up on, I didn't pick up on in a video or something that could have actually destroyed the engine. This is an interference engine and one wrong move could destroy. And I'm glad that everything went smooth, no engine codes, no leaks that I know of. I drove it probably 160 kilometers tight, drove to Aubrey's, got a bite to eat, came back and it ran absolutely beautiful. It's probably, I've had this truck about seven years and this is the nicest it's ever ran. No more noises, no more ticking, no more light knocking. It runs absolutely amazing. And honestly, for a few dollars more, if you have to do the timing in your truck or whatever your 5.4 is in, spend the money, do the cam phase or lockout, end of story, never have to worry about it again. Anyways, I'm going to get going. If you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for watching. Motherfucking beer time.